Welcome back to how to do research in microeconomics. Today, we continue to chapter number three, the sense of industry. When you are doing research in microeconomics, you have to have the sense of industry. It means that you know about the situation, the nature of the industry that you are studying. I will give the example of airline industry because I get involved in the industry for many years and know something about the industry. I think that the knowledge about the industry you guide you to the truth that you may find in the research and if you guide you to choose a correct theory to explain the situation or the behavior of the firm in the industry. For other industries, I know that you have a variety of interests on many industries. For example, banking industry, telecommunications industry, manufacturing industry, tourism, food industry, retails, wholesales, agriculture, education, military, mining, forestry, many things that you may be interested in. You have to dig deeper into the industries that you are interested. It is a must that you have to study deeper and deeper to know more and more about the industry that you are studying. This is to ensure that everything that you are writing about the industry in your thesis or in your research is correct. Based on the nature and the situation, the condition, the context of that industry. If you don't know much enough about the industry that you are studying, people will ask you better you know enough about your thesis, about your research. And it is not good when you are asked like that. People are curious about you, not about the industry. Because they know more than you. Then your report or your research or your thesis do not produce the value added. Airlines industry is a very good example of classification of times of market. First of all, there are not many airlines in the world. 
because there are barriers to entry. The biggest barrier to entry for the airlines is the capital. Can you buy an airplane? This is a very huge amount of investment. Moreover, airlines are under regulation. You have to follow the IKO regulation to make your airplanes flying from one place to another place. It means that even though you have airplanes, but your airplanes cannot fly unless you can follow the regulation. Furthermore, you need the route and the time for the flight. That has to be scheduled. The scheduled route and time sometimes are very expensive. You have to deal with airports and countries that you have to fly over those countries and from airports to airports. Now, after you have airplanes and the permission to fly from IKO and the deals between airports and countries, you must have personnel, the pilots and flight attendants, those are required by all the airlines in the world, the experienced pilots are very very valuable and flight attendants need skills to serve and to protect the passengers at the same time. So you can see that these are huge investment that you need money, time and effort. Therefore, it is clear that airlines industry is not the perfect competition. But what types of market? Considering the airlines industry is monopoly or not, you can see that there is not just one airline in the world. You may think at this point, mm-hmm, maybe one airline in a route or a time. Hmm, that's a very good question. Do you have experience to find a ticket from one place to another place at a time and you find hard that there is no ticket at all just only one airline operating on that route and at that time can that be considered a monopoly hmm. a monopoly among the competition is it a monopolistic competition very good question. When you think of monopolistic competition, it means that in the long run, other airlines can enter the market or enter that route at that time. Is it possible to do so? Hmm, this is another good question. If the market condition indeed indicates that no other airlines can enter the market for a very long, long time. Then it can be considered that the route and the time is under monopoly by that operating airline. However, if there is still a chance for another airline to enter the market, for that route and that time, then the monopoly power cannot persist forever. And we can think about monopolistic competition 
in the long run. Now, if you think about the monopolistic competition, you need to find the success factor of the airlines. Yes, you think of the number of passengers in that route and at the time. Very good. If there are plenty of passengers, then that airline will have excess profit and attracts other airlines to enter the market. However, if the number of passengers are not sufficient, then that airline may suffer from the small demand. You think of the AR that is very small and even decreasing. What would happen to that airline? The lost. It can be expected that the airline would be lost. And then the airline, even if have the monopoly power over that small sub-market, may have to leave the market because of the lost. You can see that operating an airline is not easy, even though you have a lot of money. Especially under the COVID-19 situation, when a lot of airlines suffer from financial troubles. I hope that all the airlines and my friends who work for airlines will pass this situation with safe and hope. And somehow all the good in the world would bring about the life and the cheerful jobs on the air back to them again. Under normal situation, you can't imagine that the competition among airlines are very, very strong. What do they compete? In the same route and the same time, you can see that the price of the tickets are very, very cheap. They offer very cheap tickets to passengers to compete with the price competition. According to my research, about 10 years ago, if you book a ticket of an airline for a certain route and time long enough, for example, 45 days prior to the day of the flight, you may have a very, very cheap ticket. At that time, the business model of low-cost airlines came into the market and occupied a certain part of the market and replaced the full-service airline. Therefore, the airline's market could be divided into two parts. First, the full-service airlines, and second, the low-cost airlines. After some years, the low-cost airlines didn't satisfy with the name of low-cost. They named themselves low-fare airlines. What are the sources of the low fare for airlines? First, they lower the quality and quantity of the services. Something that is not necessary for passengers 
are eliminated out to save the cost for providing those services. Second, they use a smaller airplane which are more efficient for the flight. Third, they manage the time at the airport to save the cost for parking at the airport. Fourth, they choose the secondary airport which is cheaper for takeoff and landing and for parking. Fifth, they manage the passengers to do everything by themselves and reduce the number of personnel. Therefore, they save the cost of the personnel. Sixth, they hire people to do jobs for them from attitudes. It means that the airlines recruit members by high energy and an attitude to work uh, very efficiently, especially the young that seek the opportunity to work or to have the jobs with airlines. Moreover, they charge just only the ordinary fare for the ticket. If you have some extra demand or requirement, you have to pay, for example, the weights of your luggages or the extra meals or the extra requirement for the seat, the reservation of your seat. Anything that is extra from ordinary fare of the ticket, you have to pay. You can see that sometimes the low cost airlines or the low fare airlines offer not cheap at all because of those additional costs associated with extra requirement. You can see that you have a big luggage and you need the meal on board then the fare can be compatible to the full service airline that's the trick of those low cost airlines however what the passengers perceive is the ordinary airfare which indicate the level of the price of that airlines in a certain route and time. Passengers compare that ordinary airfares or ordinary price of the tickets. They don't calculate the extra expenditures that you have to pay. This is a perception that people perceive about the price competition. What would happen if some of airlines operate in the same route and at the same time? For example, Bangkok to Chiang Mai and Chiang Mai to Bangkok. Many airlines are operating in this route and on the daytime you can choose a lot of airlines and what do they compete and what do you search for 
Think about that. You search for the prize. That's correct. Why you search for the prize? Because any airlines can bring you from Bangkok to Chiang Mai, or from Chiang Mai to Bangkok. You can spend one hour on board, and some hours at the airport. The same for any airlines. You can think of the identical product or very very similar products between them. What do you perceive the difference between airlines? Yes, you may think of the comfort that you may have from the full service airline, but it is somehow unnecessary at all if you just want to fly from one place to another place, and you sleep. All the time of the flight, but you can save money, a lot of money. Then, thinking just leaving from one airport to another airport for an hour is the same on any airlines. Then, now you turn to think of the price. And all the airlines know this; they offer cheaper prices. At least, they control the level of the prices, not to be so different from other airlines. This is the price competition. Now. You can see many interesting things for airlines industry. First, it is not perfect competition at all. Second, it can be monopoly in a certain route and time. If only one airline is allowed to operate in that route and time for some reasons. Third, it can be monopolistic competition. If in the short run, just only one airline operates in the certain route and time, but in the long run, other airlines can enter that route and time. Fourth, it can be duopoly. If just two airlines competing in a certain route and time, and fifth, it can be oligopoly. If there are more than two firms or more than two airlines operating in the certain route and time, and you can see that under oligopoly, it would be the price competition. That would happen in that route and time. Price competition is like a game. If you raise the price of your ticket more expensive than other airlines, it means that you may lose the market to those competitors. Even if Other airlines don't do anything. Just hold the level of their price constant. But you are disadvantaged because of the more expensive tickets. However, if you lower the price of your ticket, then it may attract passengers. And have more passengers to your airlines. However, you may suffer from losing money because 
you need a huge amount of money to operate the airlines but you lower the revenue from selling cheaper tickets what would happen to you you may get lost and you may be driven out of the market because of yourself while other airlines do nothing just hold the price stable and you do it by yourself you drive yourself out of the business by lowering the price of the ticket so what is the best strategy when all other airlines do nothing about the prices it is very good question very interesting to answer and that's the game theory in another case if all the other airlines lower their prices and you don't what would happen to you now you will be driven out of the business because of do nothing in contrast to the previous case that you are driven out of the business because you do something but now you do nothing but you still be driven out of the business very interesting so I return to the question what would be the best strategy in doing business in airlines business that's game theory you can see until now we have studied microeconomic theory too from the classification of times of market to the degree of similarity and now we think of the strategy why we have to think of strategy after we classify the types of market because the strategies differ in different types of market if you cannot classify the right type of market then you choose the right strategy it is impossible to do so you can choose the right strategy after you classify the right type of market you see the point then I emphasize that you need to know the type of market first you need to know the degree of similarity of your product and the products of your competitors then you turn to the strategy that you need to do to survive in that market and make profit and not suffer from the lost from now on I will show you how game theory would suggest you the best strategy in a certain type of market please follow the next lesson it will be more and more interesting see you in next class have a nice day and have a nice flight especially the flight back to your home I love every time that I have a flight back to my hometown in Chiang Mai. 
I miss all my family here. I miss Chiang Mai. See you later. 再见 Goodbye. สวัสดีครับ。